In today's episode, we are going to look at transmission of power by circular shafts or solid circular bars. So, shafts are used to transmit power from one device to the other. The amount of power transmitted is dependent on some factors and these factors include we are going to look at the magnitude of the torque and the speed of rotation. Now our power is going to be represented by P. Are we okay? So we have two things to link the magnitude of the torque and the speed of rotation. They are going to give us the power transmitted by a circular bar or a circular shaft. So for example, we can, let's say I have a device here, one device here, and it is producing power. I also have another device here that needs power too. So if I want to transmit the power from this device onto that, the only way or one of the ways I can use is to couple it with what? A shaft or a rotating shaft. So now I can couple this to that with a circular what? Shaft. So as this rotates, it is going to rotate this part such that the power is going to be what? Transmitted from this place to that. Are you okay? So now we want to look at how much power is this bar or this circular shaft going to transmit from point one to point two. And with this, we are saying the power that is going to be transmitted by this circular bar is going to depend on the magnitude of the torque. What is the torque produced in the first one in machine one? Are we okay? And the speed of rotation of the bar or the shaft that is also going to tell us how much power is transmitted to the machine too is that right all right so now we are going to denote power by p so we are going to say our power is going to be p it is dependent on one magnitude of the torque let's call it magnitude of torque we can call it as what well, t and the speed of rotation we also have speed of rotation and that is what we call the angular speed or angular velocity and angular velocity is denoted by what omega this way it is also called the angular, the speed of rotation, we are going to call it the angular velocity. Is that right? So in that case, now what is going to be the relation between torque and power? Now we are going to say our power transmitted by the circular shaft is going to be the torque multiplying the speed of rotation. This is the expression. So this is our equation one. Is that okay? So in order to get the unit of power, we are, we are going to further simplify this formula and let's derive the unit. The unit is going to be, we know that the unit of power is what? What, right? Yes. So, but we can also do some analysis here. Torque is measured in what? Newton meter multiplying the omega, which is angular velocity, it is also measured in rad per second. So this unit is going to give us Newton meter rad on what? Our second. All right. So now we also have a relation for the angular speed. If a shaft is rotating about its axis, we can find an expression relating to its velocity and the frequency. So the angular speed, the speed of rotation of this circular bar, which is what omega is going to relate to 2 pi f, where f is the frequency. Is the frequency 
upwards the bar or the frequency of the rotation are we okay so in a case where we are giving the frequency of rotation we can use this expression to also derive the omega is that okay in many cases too we are not going to be giving the frequency but rather number of rotation per minute how many times is this bar rotating per minute remember the number of rotation will depend or determine how much power is transmitted if it is slow it is going to uh, transmit less power and if it is fast it is going to be what much power transmitted so let's find an expression that is going to relate the omega the angular speed to the number of rotation this bar is going to make about its axis and in that case we are going to have it as 2 pi n on 60 are we okay so this is another expression for the omega the angular speed so we have it as 2 pi where n is number of rotation of the shafts number of rotation of the shafts so if you know the number of times the shaft is rotating per minute you can put it as n and divide it by 60 this by 60 is converting it to what seconds so that at the end of the day we can say we have the revolution we have revolution per minute is converted to revolution per what second rpm and rps is that right all right so now we can bring it back into the equation one such that we are going to have our power transmitted by a circular shaft to be the torque is there now we we will have 2 pi n t onwards 60 so this is our final equation for power transmitted by a circular shaft or a solid circular bar and power is measured in what what very simple so you can use any of the expression when you are giving the angular speed directly you multiply by the torque to get the power if you are not giving but rather the number of revolution per minute then you put it in this expression too to also derive your power pi is a constant we have our two and we have our torque are we okay so now let's look at strain energy what we call strain energy now as the bar is was straining there is what we call a strain energy and this analysis we are going to derive an equation for the strain energy it is very simple so let's derive it from first principles so let's have a bar faced at one end like this remember we are always talking about circular bars and it is fixed this way we are going to apply a torque t and once we apply a torque t this bar is going to rotate at an angle is that true all right so now we have expressions for both the torque and the displacement or the theta from the previous episode we derived the equation for torque as we are going to have multiplying what the g and over l so this is the expression of torque that we apply to the bar and we are also going to say the displacement or the deflection is going to be the torque l on what g j this is the expression for the two of them now we are going to derive an equation for the strain energy can we plot let's assume that we are going to have a series of torque applied to the same bar it is going to also give us series of what it's like we have a table of torque against the deflection so when we apply torque one it is going to give us if it is 2, we have B. If it is 3, we have C. And if it is 4, we have what? D. 
and we can plot this as what a graph and this is what we are going to get if we plot the torque against the theta which is the displacement then we are going to have a graph that is going to look like this so the graph is going to look like this are you okay and we know we know that there is going to be an area under the curve right there's an area under the curve and all the area under the curve is going to represent the strain energy do you get it yes so since this is not a perfect shape neither a rectangle or a circle that we can use formulas to drive the area under the curve we can use calculus to do that now we can consider a very small region so let me take this part and call it the theta as a small part so we are only going to consider this part so that we apply integration to get for the whole part is that right now we are saying the work done is equal to what the strain energy as the area which is equal to area under the curve all right so now we have this so i can also say my work done is equal to strain energy the symbol for strain energy is going to be capital u in this form are you okay and that is going to be equal to now we want to use integration to integrate this small the theta to the highest what theta that is we are going to start from the zero to the highest point so that we can know the entire area under the curve and this is what we are going to have so we are going to apply integration to the torque and the small theta we use so this is further going to be integration we are applying it from zero to the last point of the plotting theta and we know the formula for torque already we have it this as the g theta on our j everything on l and that is going to multiply the theta you get it this is going to be we have some constants here the g for the material is constant the j is constant and the length is also constant so this is going to give us integration from zero to theta a certain theta the theta do you get it now this is integration of what we have upper and lower limits we can put it in and simplify this portion by applying the calculus rule we are going to have everything here after integration to be e theta square and we have our j on what to l so you can perform the calculus and you know how we arrived at this so therefore for strain energy strain energy which is our u capital is going to be equal to the g of the material the deflection square the second mo moment of what inertia on two times the length this is the expression for the strain energy are we okay after the material is training this is the energy what stored inside the material it's very simple and you are good to go so we now know the power transmitted and we now know the strain energy can we solve some examples in our next episode kindly subscribe to the channel and see you in the next episode